Yo, what's up everybody? Tom Wallace here. Today, I have the privilege and the honor of doing a little uh, live interview with the man, the myth, the legend, Henrik Carlo. Henrik, how's it going? I'm doing awesome, thanks. How about yourself, Tom? Doing good. Been a, been a long summer off of the skis. What have you been up to? Doing anything fun this summer? Yeah, preparing to go skiing. <laughs> A lot of lifting. I saw you were running. Are you a runner now? At times, yeah. I started enjoying running, actually. Like, I used to always only go biking. But this summer, like, my knees and everything is feeling good. So I was running on some trails, and it was very refreshing. Just listening to music, elevating, and just, yeah, thinking about skiing. Nice. And I just saw, I think we've got some footage to take a look at. You're back on snow in Sauce Bay. How's it been skiing at Sauce Bay? It was so incredible. Like, probably my best trip ever to a glacier in the fall time. Like, I was there for a little over three weeks, and only one day during my whole stay was the mountain closed, and it was because it was snowing super hard. And, yeah, like, barely any wind at all. It was sunny slushy and just the best times like a awesome group of friends i was staying with the shapers i would ski all day and then after help out shaping and yeah it was it was really really nice man that's epic that looks so fun i'm jealous i don't know if they'd let us americans come to europe with everything going on right now they don't like us um so i got a ton of questions for you i'm excited to catch up but as well everybody out there uh watching listening Please ask a question, add it to the comments. Uh, let us know what you want to know for what you, what you want to ask Henrik, where you're from, what your name is. We'll get to a bunch of those at the end. But first off, I want to recap the season a little bit with you. Like going back, this was a season that was cut a little short for the competitions, but there was still a lot to talk about. The first thing I want to get to is that X Games Knuckle Huck event. We've got a little video to watch. Like. Take us through this whole event. What did you think of the new Knuckle Huck event? I thought it was awesome. I thought it was awesome to like compete in X Games with something that's not necessarily like the gnarliest big jump or a crazy rail features, but like something that really, really everybody could relate to. Because everybody, or like not everybody, but like everybody that's fortunate enough to have a ski hill with somewhat a roller can basically relate to it. And that yeah, was I mean, so, the so knuckle cool. itself is like a, nobody has a big air jump at their local hill, but like even in the Midwest in the US or, or wherever, there's always like a small knuckle and you can do some of these tricks. Like it's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Take us through, I mean, what was that first one you did there? You did the, the is that the Griselda flip? De describe that to me again. So I at least know my terminology for next year. Yeah, it's correct with the name. It's the Griselda flip. And it was basically, it just came, came about right when you asked what, what I called it. And I was listening to Griselda in my headphones during the whole knuckle hook. And it was the first thing that came to my head. But yeah, it's just uh, like extended nose butter, basically. That like almost is like a nose manual in a way to like switch fronty kind of style out of it. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. I kind of accidentally did it right before the contest started. Uh, I had my homie Stojan follow camming me, and I was just trying to do like the longest nose butter five. I could possibly do and accidentally like sent it a little bit off the tips and then I was like oof I think this is like the perfect trick for this type of contest it was that was such a cool trick I mean that whole event like I just remember the vibe at the top being so good like everybody was laughing and, and talking to each other and having a good time and I don't think it's like that at every x games event like Speaking of more of the events, let's let's take a look back at this year as well at the X Games Big Air event where it's a little bit more serious. You're you're doing these harder tricks on a bigger jump, but I mean, what was the Big Air event like at X Games this year? It was like honestly one of the 
greatest nights of jumping I ever had in my life. With the new format, I knew that like every single hit is gonna count. So I had uh, planned out three hits that I knew I was gonna do, and then I would just feed off the vibe after that. And I stuck those three hits perfect in the beginning, and then basically just improvised together with Nicholas Erickson, the Swedish coach, and Seton, and yeah, it was it was incredible to like lay down five different tricks from each other with like pretty much like three different grabs and like three different like rotations in a way. So that was cool. Yeah, this one I think is my favorite. The 16 with the, the tail grab, just cap right up on there. I mean, the triple was cool, but I, I mean, that was an incredible night. Did you know, like as you're competing, like the history and the relevance of taking over that dominant spot of, of the most decorated X Games free skier of all time? Did you... Did you really think about like how you were, if you want another gold, you were going to be taking over Tanner Hall. One of like the guys me and you both looked up to, like, were you thinking about that? No, I wasn't really thinking about it, but I was kind of at was some there. point a little bit, little bit tired actually of just hearing that, that <laughs> quote, like if I'm like feeling excited about trying to take over Tanner's spot. And that was like, never been like my plan or my goal you know to like necessarily beat tanner because yeah tanner is like all-time legend and for sure my goal is to get as many medals as i possibly can and like progress my skiing and all that but it was like so much focus on like surpassing tanner hall and like like i'm i'm the biggest fan of tanner like you say like growing up it was unreal to see him go back to back to back and then to even be like somewhere close to his record or his medal is a uh, unreal so yeah i i'm pretty in disbelief still yeah that's really. probably that's probably more my fault too because that's all we talk about on the commentary because it's exciting for i mean you might not be as passionate but that's the viewers love to know that like you're going for records and going for this crazy stuff. So you can blame that one on me. But while we're on the subject of like the big air and and the style and like that whole event, like I know for you style and how you look and and what you're wearing and kind of your whole persona as you're skiing from what you listen to, to what you wear is so important. And for the last like four years or so, I've been noticing you wear a helmet all the time when you're skiing, not just when you're competing, when it's mandatory, but also when you're filming and when you're just like filming in the park or urban or whatever it is. And tell me about that. What's, what's changed? I guess I just got beyond the point that like, like the already built in, like that you're not supposed to like be as stylish if you have a helmet, but then I just like, started realizing like the whole style lives inside the head, you know, obviously. So I want to protect my style in a way, you know, like, like, yeah, that's it basically. And then I seen some people that have hit their heads and then being affected by it. And yeah, I just want to make sure I protect mine and inspire the next generation that you can be like, as stylish or maybe even more stylish with a helmet on because you like extra comfortable because that style as well like as you know obviously like style is like comfort so yeah, so much so now that's a good point we we've, we've got some footage from your real ski in, in 2019 here to take a look at and like i mean anybody watching this can see the danger with like the stairs and the rails and and being able you know to still look good is so important and yeah, that's a great point. I mean, when we grew up, we can, I remember, you know, people, it wasn't cool. It was like skateboarding. Everybody wore just a hat or a tooth or whatever it is and goggles. And it's really cool to, you know, the kids look up to you. They want to, you know, do what you're doing. So you going out there and wearing a helmet is, is really inspirational. Like, do you have any advice for people? I mean, or what would you tell a kid that didn't want to wear a helmet? Like, how do you make it, you know, how do you make them think it's cool? Uh, yeah. 
I, I think just, I, I just think that they should just not really care about the helmet. Like that is not like what separates whether you have style or don't have style. So it's, yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. your moves and the way you like, yeah, your whole movement and all that, that's like the style It's not necessarily if you have a helmet or not, that's <laughs> going to separate like whether sure. you're a stylish person or not. So yeah. you just like, yeah. More on and longevity theme. wise, like if you want to have style for a long time and like, yeah, might as well just be as safe as you can. No, it's so true. And obviously on the subject of helmets, kind of the reason I brought us here, I feel like you've got a new announcement to make. You got something you want to tell me? Yes, sir. What's I that? Used to, uh, I just got a new sponsorship actually this summer. And it is together with MIPS who makes these protection cover inside a helmet. That's basically just like, an extra secure thing that makes your can help your head rotate if you hit the ground and it just makes it a little bit safer than a helmet without it so it's wicked very and cool yeah as you can probably see it's like so so thin and like doesn't weigh anything so it's like it's really nothing extra on your head that it's like an extra weight or something that would throw you off in any kind of way it's just it's nice because it has that little little bit of extra safety in it and it's wicked so sick we we've got a a, a new video with some fresh sauce bay clips to watch with you talking about it let's take a look true indeed give me some of that good old love. Oh. mips you can't even feel it. The BPS layer is so thin and the weight is in grams. The movement is only a few millimeters and it's active for just milliseconds. You might not expect it to make a difference, but sometimes the unexpected makes all the difference. Give me, give me some of that good old love. When you're hit by cooking, so it's a smash hit. The Sarsidian city is on these streets. Yo, check it. Uh, survival of the fittest today that's still. No, that's so sick to see some new footage, plus you talking about it. I mean, to me, yeah, it does. It, it seems like a no brainer. I mean, you obviously yeah. never crash in just like a, a straight way, you're always twisting and falling and like. There's so much rotation in skiing, so that that MIPS technology really seems, you know, to benefit that. And yeah, I can, I totally get it, man. Yeah, and I like have a kind of a comparison that's like, I think like somewhat accurate too. With that, it's like, since there is a system that 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 can like save certain situation, why wouldn't you have it? It's like basically like driving a car. And not having a seatbelt if there is a seatbelt in the car it's like it's like like you said it's a yeah. no-brainer and it's wicked that they came up with that system that can yeah yeah i heard a a, a story about you like taking a look back at x games big air i think it's 2019 here and uh you got like a, a new helmet painted that looks super sick but you refused to wear it because it didn't have the the mips tech technology in it is that true yeah it is true it was actually right when oakley had made like this helmet that's like a little bit smaller and even doper looking than the old one but they gave it to me like maybe like three hours before the big air x game was gonna go down and i had like talked to some friends already about mips in the helmet that i was wearing and then uh, I just saw that the new helmet didn't have that. And then I was like, whoa, this is like the one night where I'm going to like try. The craziest all in. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, and I just crossed my mind like, fuck, or this helmet doesn't have that protection that we were just talking about, me and some other friends. 
so then I just decided to go with the old helmet instead and luckily it didn't hit my head at all so yeah no. uh, it makes sense I mean why not like you're saying like with the seatbelt like take everything you can so you have the opportunity to to ski and do this for as long as possible I mean if we look back a little bit a little bit more at like some of your urban stuff especially like the real ski videos some of this stuff is so gnarly have you had any like close calls while filming any of this no luckily i've been fortunate not to not have like anything too crazy like the worst or like the most like of a close call i've had was basically at x games 2015 and I try to go for a nose but triple in the slope run and all white flash flat light slow speed and you're like yeah sent it but I knuckled and then you straight in the dome and ever since that like luckily like I recovered super fast from it and it was like nothing really that has been bothering me after but like just that moment that like, kind of made me like realize like wow i don't want to go through that again ever mm -hmm. so if there is anything that can s hold back on like for that to happen then then i'm gonna do that for sure <laughs> yeah i feel you i remember being at the top that was the last year i competed i think maybe watching you fall like that like watching one of my best friends go down like that i was like i think i'm done with this competition stuff that was the weather was so bad that day and you were going for the rowdiest run. I remember it was either going to win or it was going to take you out. It was so rowdy. Yeah, it was oh. that. And I had like learned this switch triple two that I had never showed to anybody. So I was like ready to like drop nose, but triple into switch triple. And I was like, I'm going to go in oh, <laughs> like hard of this heavy. one. But then oh. didn't make it even to the last jump. And yeah. Well, you went on to do great things from there. I mean, I'm stoked for you. That's awesome. A new partnership. I mean, let's, let's move on. What, what's next? What's, uh, what's coming up? You got any big things on the docket? Maybe a movie? Uh, not really any plans right now for a movie project. I like right now, I just finished up my third two-year project in a row. Mm -hmm. That's called Salute that we'll be releasing on November 10th and mainly just this season I I just want to ski so much and try progress my skiing and yeah because like when going from contest to filming contest filming and like always like having not I wouldn't say pressure but you just like want to create something that's like so powerful and meaningful to yourself it's hard sometimes to like allow yourself to do what you're not, what you can't master yet. Like it's mm. easy, like when you're in the backcountry to be like, all right, I'm gonna just land these tricks I know how to do. And then sometimes for sure you wanna whip it and like bring out something new. But yeah, this season I just wanna like ski so much and like hit rails like on repeat and like hit jumps. And then yeah. obviously, if it snows in the city that I'm in, I'm going to hit street rails. And same if I'm in a mountain that has good backcountry potential and it snows, I I would love to ski some backcountry. But just not really being super focused on one project, more just mm -hmm. focusing on my skiing and try, yeah, max out my, max out my potential. Oh, I love that. Well, I mean, I think I speak for the whole audience watching that I'm ready to see this movie of yours. So if you you just want to send me a preview, I'll just review it to, tonight before it comes out in November. Thanks. Uh, let's, get to, <laughs> let's get to a little q and I think that we've got some kids that want to ask some questions. I'm not going to hog all the time. So let's let's take a look. Some of the some of the questions we got from Logan here asking Henrik, one of the area's helmets are relatively uncommon is urban, arguably one of the most dangerous types of free skiing heading concrete, co concrete don't mix well. Why is that? Like, why are no people that hit urban wearing helmets? And have you seen it changing? 
I think probably just because urban skiing is so influenced by skateboarding and skateboarding, you don't really see it so often. And I think it comes from there, but I believe I I see it more and more like all the bunch guys to crypto, to like, to you, to myself, to like, there's definitely people now that do wear it in the streets. Like when we grew up, you didn't really see anybody do that. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel it too. I mean, I think you definitely see more and more of it. And I mean, skateboarders don't wear it, but a lot of like the skateboard stuff on like a ledge is pretty low speed. Like some of your X Games real ski segments, you're going like 30 miles an hour hitting a rail. Like it just like so much higher speed let's uh let's move on we got Wyatt wants to know Henrik how has that injury the nose butter triple at x games that you talked about where you crashed and hit your head changed your approach when it comes to skiing or everyday life has that made like an impact on you that particular crash uh I think probably just made me even focus more and like really like yeah maybe a little bit more careful with like when you don't don't have like the red, right gut feeling or the stomach feel like you know sometimes you like just don't really feel too sure about certain things and that was like one of those times where I was like it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work and I had a few times that this winter and I, it was like first time I actually started learning to like pull away from things. So I think that is probably the, what it taught me the most to like follow my instinct. No, that's smart. Yeah. Being like playing it by ear, how you feel that day. Uh, Ryan wants to know with the recent rise in popularity of using social media, like Instagram, to upload shorter clips, what do you think lies ahead for the future of ski movies and edits? Well, I hope and I pray that it'll keep living. Like me personally, I'm like a huge fan of seeing people get clips and save them and put together something that's like means more to them than just throwing it out on the gram for that will last like three days and then maybe be forgotten. Cause that's what, how I see it kind of in a way, like, like if you throw it on the gram, if you lucky, it will live for like a week basically, or a month mm-hmm. if you're really lucky basically, but like an edit or a movie, like I still keep going back to all T hall, Mikael, Candide segment, like, Tom Wallace, super unknown at it. Like all these like classics. It's like, they're going to remain timeless. Like just cause it's like a piece of like, yeah. No, so it's, I, it's a piece yeah. of history. It's like a piece of that era. I mean, it leads me to this next question from Wyatt as well. He wants to know, what do you think the golden age or the golden era of skiing and style is? Or do you think it's behind us? 2020. 2020 is gonna be it 2021 22 okay it's coming no but uh, i think i think you can find gold in all the eras like for sure me personally i think like from the 2000s until 2006 maybe it's like the era that i am the biggest fan and most influenced by but i still see it out there these days and you can still see kids come through and like when you do see it it's it it's nice oh yeah speaking of style uh peter wants to know what was it like skiing with mikel the other day it it's it's the dream Mm -hmm. it's it's the coolest like you just follow him go behind him in the park and you basically feel like you're watching a movie it's the sickest thing like me and Noah talked about it Noah was filming some of the shots of him Mm -hmm. and if you just go there and you just put on some jizza or 
Yeah, some of his old yeah. like hip hop tracks and your headphones. So you go behind him and you're like, yeah. yup, I don't need to do anything. I'm gonna just keep this perfect distance and watch him. That's so cool. What I mean, definitely those segs and like exact science and stuff will live on in infamy. Uh, Big Purple Ski Suit wants to know if you had to choose one up and coming skier today who might be able to surpass your record of X Games medals. Who would it be and why? Is there anybody out there you think can uh, take your crown? Isaac Simon is Panda. <laughs> your boy? Yeah. He's coming, think, he's coming for the crown? I don't know if he's coming for that crown, but he's coming for some crowns, that's for sure. Okay. And he got, the, he got the flavor. He's got that Mikel style, I feel like. The kit yeah. and the way he grabs tail. He's yeah. got some of that Mikel. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You just, it's the same stuff. When I, when I ski with him, too, I can just like watch, and I'm like, whoa. That just feels good watching. Like you get like a feeling inside you like, whoo, 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 and get so inspired. Especially for me, it's so cool because like Mikel is eight years older than me. Isaac is nine years younger. So I'm like right in between where I can like look up and like kind of look down at in a way like and be like, wow, like so hyped. Very cool, man. That is, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's see. Zach, the big air kid, wants to know, Henrik, do you ever see age limiting your capabilities? I know you're not as old as I am. I'm old as a dinosaur, but do you ever see yourself being limited by how old you're getting? I haven't seen that limit yet. And uh, no, uh, it hasn't like really crossed my mind yet. So I'm all good. <laughs> nice. I you mean, see, you- like, seeing like Tanner and like all these other guys, like, Candide too is they both eight and nine years older than me and I they haven't really slowed down and yeah I think it's a matter of like taking care of your body and like being smart about the decisions and the moves and all that obviously but yeah I yeah I'm just uh, you're going for it I mean I feel like oh, yeah no. you've you've Skinny taken it more ser- going to Mount Everest no. <laughs> You've taken it way more seriously, though, from like the diet and, and the training and like skiing where and when you can. So, I mean, that's that's the way to do it. You have, we can't ski like we were uh, in the four by nine days as like teenagers forever. We just used to get up and ski without anything and back's a little more sore nowadays. Yeah, no, it's for sure that like definitely. But that's pretty much it. The only difference like I. I don't feel any worse in my body. I just know that I take way more care of my body. And like, I'm so, so, so focused. And I love skiing like so, so much. So everything I do is basically something to better my skiing, whether like you say, it's any type of training to eating to all that. Like, I think everything has an impact and effect on the way you're going to, ski (laughs) no i love it yeah that's smart uh trey dudley wants to know are we gonna see a tom and henrik collab edit that can rival the resurrection edit i'm pretty sure that would cure coronavirus he says i mean i feel like the i feel good edit needs to come back i need to come back to aura and we need to film in the spring that or in park city oh Old school four by nine style. If King's Crown was still there, maybe Hyphy edit 3.0. Yeah. AJ filming. Napes. Oh, that would be a you dream. That's an, ed- beat. <laughs> That's an edit I can get behind. Uh, we're going to make that happen I next year. I saw you and Simon did it this year. So we got to get back together. That was you- so sick, by the way. Oh, so thank sick. You. Thank you for doing that for the culture <laughs> and for all your super fans. Oh, easy. That was fun. It just, it made me realize we need more park edits. So we're going to have to link up next, uh, next year. Let's see. We got one more that just popped up. And, Photo uh, man, man wait, wait, wait. Sorry to interrupt, but like back to that, that's like exactly like if you and Simon would have put like 
an Instagram clip of together skiing, like one clip, it wouldn't have been nearly the same kind of power that that one edit was. And that's so like true. how I see it. Like, wow, when it's like an edit of like park skiing with two like super cats, then it's like, yeah. Yeah, it just lives, it, it doesn't get forgotten as much, I guess. Every little Instagram clip, the next day there's more Instagram clips. Yeah, exactly. That's tough. Uh, so photo, photo Manish wants to know uh, a little bit more about your uh, working out, stretching, and yoga routine. How much time are you spending doing that? Basically, as much as I can. <laughs> when I'm not skiing, it's that's it. Because, yeah. <laughs> That's no, it's it. smart. All, I always see you on the huh? on the gram stretching and uh and spinning on the bike and doing it all. Yeah, I try as much as I can if I'm not editing ski movies, watching ski movies, or thinking about making ski movies or skiing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I most likely will be doing that so I can hopefully go ski soon. No, it's so smart. Uh Okay, well, that's it for our questions. Before I let you go, I really want to take a look and hype the audience up. Me and you are going to get together again in November and talk about this before the movie drops. But I think we've got the trailer for your new movie, Salute, that we're going to play now for everybody to see. Get hyped on what Henrik's been up to and uh, get hyped for the movie coming November. Yeah. Salute. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to see that one. Um, anything you want to leak or tell the audience about that movie to get them psyched up for uh, the release in November? It's it's cool. It's it's super sick. It's it definitely has a different look than any of my previous projects mm-hmm. since. This project, Step Studios and Bug Visionaries, was like there from the very beginning. And we had Isaac Soko directing the whole th- whole thing and Matthias editing. So it definitely has a little bit of a, a new feel to it, which I'm super hyped about because it's, yeah, I wanted something a little bit different than what I had in the past. So get together with those guys was an awesome way to get that done nice well i i think i speak for everyone saying i cannot wait to watch it i hope i get a an early preview and again thank you so much henrik for taking the time it's been so good to catch up and thank you everybody out there on the internet tuning in uh this has been awesome and uh we'll wait and we'll see you guys next time uh good luck out there in europe henrik hopefully we'll be making that edit edit together soon Please, please. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, cheers, awesome brother. To catch up. Hope to see you soon. Sounds good. We'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Peace, bro.